crazy, completely crazy. Communicable Disease Center in Atlanta, all these epidemiologists, all these infection disease specialists, and they've come to the wrong conclusion. They clearly have. It is just madness. As you say, so few children suffer from COVID. And, you know, we teach medical students about risk mitigation. You know, everything you do in medicine has a risk and everything you do has a benefit. And so the idea is you balance the risks versus the benefits. And here, the risks clearly outweigh the potential benefits. You know, the risk, no one's used mRNA vaccines before. This is the first time they've been used in large numbers of people. I've had one, I've had the Pfizer one, other people, my colleagues had the Moderna one, and we don't know what's gonna happen, but we're old, so it doesn't matter. But if you're six months old, for goodness sake, who knows what's going to happen in 30 years' time? I don't have children that age. I've got grandchildren that sort of age. And uh, I would tell them that my daughters and my son, do not get these kids immunized. Just leave it alone. It's not a serious illness. We're coming out of it, for goodness sake. So please, yeah. let's stop this madness. People could be forgiven for wondering whether or not there's some quite serious money involved here, couldn't they, Carl? Because there doesn't appear to be any logical scientific or medical reason for doing this. And so the only thing I can come to the conclusion to is clearly uh, vaccine companies or whoever's making these these kind of jabs uh, stands to make quite a lot of money off it. They do. 28 quid a shot. That's what it costs what? for the Pfizer vaccine. Yeah, 28 quid a shot. Now, that's not a lot of money, but when you think millions of people are yeah. being vaccinated, this is a huge pool of money. It's put share prices beyond any conception. I mean, it is just outrageous, the conflict of interest of people that are the advisors to government all around the world, not just in the US, but here in other countries, their advisors also to the pharmaceutical industry. This is just a crazy world we're in now. And mm. we've got to get some realism here. We've got to stop this madness of, you know, Fame, fortune, and glory follows the vaccinators, follows the epidemiologists. It's over. The pandemic is over. And we've got to get out of it now. Are you, are, are you concerned? Well, you are concerned. You alluded to it before. But just elaborate on that just very quickly for me, please, if, if that's all right, about your concerns regarding a long-term impact, maybe, on, on people who are six months old who might have this, this jab. You, you're, you're, you're not massively convinced it's the safest thing for them to do. Is that right? Completely. Who knows what the long-term side effects are? It could increase cancer incidence, for example. It could increase um, heart damage. It could increase liver damage and so on. We just don't have that data. No one's ever used RNA vaccines before, two years ago. And now is the time to take you know, the, the pandemic is coming to an end. It's not a serious business. It's always been much less serious for young children. So why go to six months to five-year-olds? This is just craziness. It really is. Yeah.